good evening welcome to this uh, instagram live session i am dr sridhar kalyana sundaram head of uh, neonatology at zoleka hospital dubai we will wait a couple of minutes for a few of few more of you to join uh, there are a few questions that have already been sent in first of all i would like to thank the mustala team for arranging this i am sure it will be a very helpful session for the parents i am not very good at multitasking so i may not be able to read your messages as i speak but uh, i'll get messages fed back to me and i'll try to answer your questions so i'd like to uh, focus on infant skin care starting with the newborn period there are a few questions related to uh, this i mean i don't have the names they have not been forwarded to me but uh, one of them is how to tell if my baby has sensitive skin some questions about nappy rash and how to manage it which hair oil is best for the babies baby is getting white patches uh, similar to the dry patches that was mentioned earlier uh, can all of you hear me okay i hope you can hear me so there is a question on eczema whether drinking milk gives you eczema and uh, one of the last questions that i received so far is can boils be formed on the baby's face after applying moisturizer and if so how can i prevent it so we have about 40 minutes of time and uh, the first 10 to 15 minutes i will try to focus on giving you an overview of skin care which probably would address most of the questions you have asked me and then we can focus on uh, some of the specifics anjali from the mustala team has been very helpful and she will be passing on your questions which she thinks can be covered in this session as we speak so the skin is basically uh, the most important or the largest uh, surface that we have and it's very sensitive in the newborn period all babies have sensitive skin so the degree of sensitivity may vary but all newborns have a thin scrotum corneum which is the topmost layer of the skin and so uh, this will be uh, prone to dryness and uh, break in the skin barrier and so on the skin is an important barrier uh, it has a protective function obviously it has a thermal insulating function as well and aesthetics i mean uh, we look at the face and the skin and we are attracted to someone so baby is one of the most attractive things we can ever see so obviously a healthy skin is important for that aesthetics part as well uh, it improves bonding if the child has a healthy skin and a rash or anything may be uh, quite distressing to the parents as i said the skin has uh, the epidermis on the top and we have the dermis which is the uh, inner layer the epidermis is uh, bob- covered by a thick layer called stratum corneum this layer becomes thicker as we age and the newborn period it's very thin and those of you who may have premature babies it's even thinner that's why we avoid putting any tapes on the skin of babies if possible and even when we manage babies in the intensive care unit uh, skin care is one of the most important consideration because there is a risk of dry skin uh, starting to use emollients and having a normal wash routine avoiding irritant chemicals like soaps in the first one year of life it's very important which product to choose how to choose them we will discuss a little bit about that as well so uh, when the baby is born obviously their skin is covered with a white material called uh, vernix it's a cheesy material it's basically the sebaceous secretions the collection of the cells which have been shed in the womb and it gives a baby skin an initial moisturizing effect as well as some protection so it doesn't look good most parents want to remove it early but what we suggest is to leave it at least for the first 8 to 24 hours it does have a protective role and it prevents against drying in that period so once the vernix is removed uh, the skin has to be looked after carefully the important part of the newborn skin uh, the cord care i mean uh, umbilical cord most of you uh, who are attending the session probably have babies of their own so uh, the cord care is important we avoid applying chemicals on the cord because in a 
delivery in the hospital it's in a clean setup there is no uh, significant risk of infection we recommend keeping the cord dry so one of the main things that can keep the cord moist or cause it to smell is to cover the cord area with the nappy the cord stump so if the nappy is covering it it retains moisture inside a different type of uh, bacteria grow in a moist environment compared to a dry environment so from the beginning we recommend keeping the nappy folded below it and subsequent to that it dries on its own it separates by say 7 to 14 days some babies it comes off early it depends on what kind of bacteria is colonizing it remember that not all bacteria is harmful so there are quite a few friendly bacteria that we have on our skin in our gut and uh, oral cavity and everywhere else so the umbilical cord gets colonized in the first when the baby is born there is no bacteria on the skin but usually it's a healthy bacteria from the mother that colonizes the skin especially in a vaginal delivery so the cesarean delivery the bacteria from the hospital may colonize the skin as well so that's one of the reasons why you may prefer a vaginal delivery as possible so the uh, umbilical cord separates on its own uh, by 7 to 10 days you don't need to pull on it or anything just keep it dry if uh, it's separating you'll see a little stickiness around it at that stage you can clean uh, uh, using wet cotton that should be adequate but if it is uh, looking yellowish you can clean with the alcohol swab at that stage but during the initial stages or later on we don't recommend using antibiotic powders we don't use routine cleaning with the alcohol wipes as well using uh, products like these may actually delay the separation because the normal bacteria which are needed for it to separate will not be available to use as well for the baby's skin so this is in relation to cord care one thing that the parent should learn to identify is whether there is any uh, cord infection so if there is redness around the umbilical site a little redness which is briefly there and goes away should be okay you can make sure the skin isn't too dry at that stage However, if the uh, uh, so if the uh, if the redness is extensive, especially if you see pus-like discharge coming from the umbilicus, it's a very serious concern because the umbilical cord, as we know, is connected to the uh, mother's womb through blood vessels, and one of these blood vessels runs through the baby's liver. So any infection in the umbilicus can lead to involvement of the liver and can cause future problems we call that portal hypertension so we take an umbilical sepsis very seriously of course not every ooze from the umbilicus is umbilical sepsis you don't need to be worried if there is significant redness significant pus like discharge then we may need to admit the baby and give iv antibiotics but most of the time if it is mild redness we can manage with topical treatment so this is in relation to umbilical care uh, the next question comes as to when to bathe the baby so a newborn baby's skin is very sensitive and also when the baby is born they are prone to cold stress so we don't want to disturb their uh, peaceful routine by bathing them unnecessarily too frequently bathing is also a process which removes the skin covering as well so though even though cleanliness is important bathing is not the only way to clean and bathing too frequently especially if you use uh, more than lukewarm water can be harmful because the hot water or warm water may remove the fat barrier from the skin so uh, a gentle wash uh, in a bath baby bath tub is a good option having some soothing uh, i mean uh, baby milks is okay emollient milks is fine to use and uh, a good bath routine with the massage beforehand uh, cuddling the baby and then washing in the evening sometimes helps to reduce colic and uh, be aware of the temperature in the room don't expose the baby to cold for too long because that makes them uncomfortable if it is a premature baby we don't advise regular uh, bathing too frequently in the first two months or so so we try to uh, do it once in three to four days once they're over two kilos at least so before two kilos we just suggest wet wiping and uh, once you have bathed the baby we recommend using an emollient uh, in areas where there is proneness and in high risk groups high risk groups is where there is family history of eczema it may be one of the siblings of the baby it may be yourself who has eczema or one of your family members might be suffering from it eczema itself is a byproduct of uh, tendency to dry skin and uh, allergens may contribute to it but not necessarily we'll discuss that towards the end of this uh, session so uh,
moisturizing has been shown to be one of the ways to prevent dry skin and uh, it also leads to reducing the risk of eczema even in families with the risk of eczema in uae for example we have uh, air conditioning as a routine so air conditioning leads to dry skin as you all know if you travel in the plane you have dry skin within no time uh, there the humidity is lower than what we have in the air conditioning in our houses but obviously air conditioning dries the skin and babies are air conditioned i mean the air conditioned environment so in an environment like uae we have to take almost all babies as a risk for eczema and we have to moisturize the skin to prevent dry skin in the first 2 to 3 months most infants have a little bit of dry skin on the cheeks and uh, over the abdominal wall whenever there is an area of dry skin it can lead to inflammation and uh, this inflammation can uh, lead to eczema later on because it breaks the skin barrier it may allow harmful uh, allergens to enter into the skin barrier and that can lead to allergy as well in families with risk of eczema this barrier is uh, predisposed to breaking down so the repair itself uh, is a difficult process so when we use moisturizer our aim is to use a moisturizer which is safe to use which is effective which has components which are not harmful and uh, which are made by a company which uh, has quality control as a stringent factor so something like mustela products we recommend as well and um, they have specific products for uh, eczema as well which have been studied to reduce inflammation in the skin uh i would suggest a daily moisturizing when the skin gets inflamed there is a red area on the skin and it may be itchy for the baby they may be irritable they may be fussy a little bit of scaling may happen on the top so there was a question about a dry patch uh, on the face or on the abdominal wall so when this redness happens it is inflamed and uh, when the inflammation heals whether with treatment or without treatment it may lead and leave an area of hypopigmentation so that was the other question about uh, whitish pigmentation on the skin so initially you get an inflamed skin and then it leaves a hypopigmented area this hypopigmented area basically uh, will resolve on its own so this is a remnant of what was inflamed earlier and when the skin starts getting inflamed if you treat it early this hypopigmentation is not usually prominent so if you allow it to stay for some time if you're not uh, moisturizing the skin adequately in early on and if it gets inflamed it may sometimes need a mild treatment uh, we sometimes give a mild steroid uh, treatment which it should be under supervision so don't overuse steroids because they can have harmful effects and it can make the skin to be thin as well so uh, we wouldn't uh, recommend uh, r- routine use of uh, any medicines like that it should be mainly the emollients and majority of the situation if you use a good product which has been shown for example i mentioned the mustela products the ones meant for eczema like stilatopia they have components uh, like the sunflower oil uh, oleo distillate which has been shown to have uh, immune suppress i mean the in- anti inflammatory effect and avocado persios uh, has a good moisturizing effect as well so these components may help in healing the skin without the use of steroids and there are studies which have established this as well so this is in relation to moisturizing there was a question about uh, use of shampoo so cradle cap is not improving so uh, that's a question on the screen just now so i can answer that i mean uh, basically cradle cap is uh, nothing but uh, are you guys seeing the message is coming on my screen i'm not sure if you see that so uh, i'm trying to swipe them off so it doesn't hide the screen but if you don't see it then i don't mind someone can say if you see the message that came on the screen just now you can type a message i'm this is the first time i'm doing instagram live so i'm not familiar with these uh, aspects of it so cradle cap is nothing but uh, a seborrheic dermatitis okay so someone uh, replied that they cannot see so i don't need to bother about those messages at least so it's a uh, a coating that forms on the scalp uh, due to the sebaceous secretions that get dried in some cases it gets crusted it forms like a coating it can also happen on your eyebrows 
and uh, it can be irritating i mean it can itch and uh, it gets inflamed at times if it is severe so a mild cradle cap you just use a mild shampoo and after shampooing you apply oil on the scalp which oil to use is a question as well so you can either use a baby oil or you can use a cooking oil we don't routinely recommend cooking oils because they are not free of impurities so something manufactured uh, like a mineral oil or a baby oil from a trusted brand can be used uh but if you prefer a cheaper option and you don't see any side effects you can use uh, coconut oil or olive oil as well but we don't recommend that routinely so uh you can apply the oil and gentle combing should remove it a mild flake on the scalp doesn't harm the child if it's not inflamed so you don't need to bother too much about removing it fully however if it's a significant cradle cap we have specific products like uh, stilaker from ustella which you can apply overnight and wash it in the morning and uh, that reduces the thickening and you can gently comb it off if it is inflamed or if there is infection sometimes we get a bacteria called staphylococcus both in eczematous skin and in uh, cradle cap where the skin barrier is broken down this bacteria may get into the skin so if there is uh, infection it may appear yellowish crusted and uh, you may consider using uh, a product containing an antibacterial like fusidin uh, that's a common antibacterial cream and uh, mild steroid like alpha cot can be added on for a very brief time you also get a mild steroid lotion form uh, in the most severe forms but uh, the steroids are only used very transiently if you can uh, uh, if you cannot control it by the milder measures so one or two days of steroid to reduce the symptoms maximum 5 days not more than that so this is with relation to cradle cap and uh, there are uh, some questions about whether the moisturizer can cause a rash uh, the choice between the cream and lotion i mean it's a tricky one for parents uh, one of the main things is if your skin is normal the lotions are much easier to use they spread easily and you use a small it lasts you longer because it's a liquid uh, base however if the skin is very dry and if it sensitive skin which has cracked a lotion i mean when you apply the lotion it evaporates because the water evaporates and so it can cause some stinging effect and uh, if it is very dry the lotion isn't effective enough so we have the grades of efficacy you have the oil as the first one then you have the uh, lotion and then the cream the cream is most effective if you have definitely dry skin something like the stilatopia balm preparation is quite helpful in these situations where the consistency is appropriate it's more of an oily base uh there was a question uh, earlier about uh, acne coming as a result of moisturizing if you are using uh, lotion we don't uh, see much of a problem with acne we should avoid oil on the face oil has a link to acne the infantile acne is a uh, reddish spots coming on the cheeks and forehead sometimes it's quite active uh, pimple like lesions sometimes it looks like pustules and can be scary for the parents especially if it's a florid one so if acne starts around 3 weeks and it goes away usually by 2 months of age uh, there is uh, no serious concern and if the pustules are large you can check with the doctor but otherwise you don't need to consult uh regarding the acne no treatment is needed make sure the room is well ventilated uh it's not too warm don't over wrap the baby uh, sometimes you get prickly heat on the forehead after first week or two because you are putting the hat all the time and uh, the room is very warm so uh it's important to keep it uh, ventilated nicely and you don't over uh, heat the room the uh, other products uh i mean obviously uh, acne if you are using a cream uh, on the face when it is not too dry it can lead to acne if you are using a lotion on wet skin uh, that's one important point i want to mention that using a moisturizer on wet skin is very important so don't uh, apply it on skin which is dry already a moisturizer retains moisture it doesn't give additional moisture so you have to have moisture on the skin and you apply the moisturizer as a tap coating on the top to retain the moisture moisturizing keeps the skin barrier intact so the stratum corneum is maintained as it is it doesn't break down so the cracking and other aspects of the irritation doesn't happen so this is an important step if the area is more dry you moisturize more often you use appropriate moisturizer the product uh, does matter but more important is how you apply it how much you apply how often you apply and whether you are using it on wet skin or not and by wet skin it can be soon after you come out of the bath or a shower 
without uh, drying the skin fully you dab the skin and dab the water of the skin and then you apply it uh, you can also use a uh, wet towel which is quite wet uh, wrap it on the skin and soon after that you can uh, use it as well question about sunscreen for the babies when to start and any way to protect the skin from sun in summer obviously uh, baby skin is very sensitive and if you do have to take the baby out in the sun you can start using the sunscreen hopefully you wouldn't be taking the baby out too much in the first two months of age when they are at risk of infections and sunburn is a risk as well but after two months of age it's safe to use a sunscreen designed for babies and infants we normally recommend a 50 uh, spf which is a sun protection factor which relates to the duration it lasts as well as the intensity of uv it prevents so uh, it's important sun care is important uh, keeping the baby in a shaded area of course vitamin d uh, production is important as well those of us who have dark skinned uh, babies uh, vitamin d production even if you exposed to sun is not much and we do recommend vitamin d supplementation for all babies anyway uh, in the first one and a half to two years of age uh, there is a question about uh, oil massage for baby i mean as i said earlier mineral oils are recommended uh, or uh, natural products which are produced by brands is recommended the cooking oils are not meant for application on the skin they may have contaminants so uh, some of them may irritate the skin so that's one of the reasons we avoid but as we know traditionally uh, cooking oil like coconut oil is quite commonly used and um, if you don't face any difficulties it's fine sometimes some families use uh, besan which is gram flour uh, we don't recommend any food items being applied on the skin because there is a drying effect. It can also sensitize and it can lead to allergy. There's a question on whether Mustela products can be used for adults. Yes, certainly it can be used. I mean, the moisturizers work quite well for adult skin as well. If you have eczema, these products are similar. I mean, you can use stronger products if you have a thick skin. Uh, urea containing products can be used as well for adults but uh, not necessarily that you need it unless there is like unification so you can discuss with your doctor and uh, mustela products are quite good for ba uh, babies as well as adults of course you have specific range of products for each age group and uh, can kids expose <laughs> it's a difficult question whether they can be exposed to sunlight every day uh, of course we recommend to be active uh, it's a difficult question to answer with the current lockdown as well isn't it so we are all trying to be as indoors as we can so uh, try to be uh, exposing to sunlight where you can in a safe way i mean uh, sunburn is a possibility we are approaching the summer in the uae and uh, using sunblock is important if you have a western lifestyle and you like being around the pool it's definitely good it's healthier option you're active you're swimming and you're also exposing to sun but uh, standing in the sun just to get vitamin d uh, probably is not a good idea in this uh, climate conditions encouraging an active lifestyle letting them go out and play when they are the older kids i mean if they are three four years old let them run around but if it is an infant i mean you can expose them when you're exposing yourself to the pool and stuff but with the sunscreen and not for too long dehydration and uh, other problems may happen as well is it normal for the baby for the hair to fall with the flakes i mean uh, hair is a very uh, concerning part for many parents but remember that the baby hair uh, which is the initial hair it tends to fall off come on fall off come on for the first 18 months to two years many cultures have a habit of uh, shaving the baby's hair uh, and there is a belief that shaving will cause the thicker hair to come it's not related to the shaving i mean there are many cultures who don't shave and still the proper hair comes by two years or so repeated shaving um, it's up to you if you want to do it in a safe way it's fine but it doesn't have any specific benefit and don't be worried about hair loss patches because the baby tends to lie on the side the hair tends to fall off and when you have cradle cap i think the question refers to uh, flakes related to cradle cap so if you have cradle cap obviously uh, when the flakes fall off uh, some hair will fall but this is related to the baby hair so the hair loss in that period you don't need to be worried of course cosmetically you may be concerned and don't compare your baby with other babies because there are babies who are born with loads of hair there are babies who have a bald head maybe like me but uh, 
don't uh, worry about that as they grow by 18 months to 2 years they start getting the proper pattern of hair uh, the color of the hair as well changes with time sometimes they are born with dark hair it becomes a bit blonde or the other way around so uh, so there's a question I get acne while using Mustela moisturizer I mean as I said if the tendency of the skin is uh, to uh, get acne and you use an oily product with oily base you may get more acne but uh, you can choose the product like a lotion which doesn't have much oil and that may be adequate for your skin if you have dry skin and acne then it may be a difficult problem maybe you may have to discuss with the dermatologist but if you use a lotion on wet and wet skin as we discussed avoid using too much soap and use appropriate skincare products it should be fine so uh, is it worth getting humidifier for the baby's room if baby has eczema? So uh, humidifiers basically, I mean, uh, the extent to which the humidifier is difficult to predict. It depends on the size of the room. It depends on how long it stays for, whether the room is open or closed, what is the ambient temperature and so on. So if it is a small room and you're keeping it in the bed space of the baby, it might help, but uh, you can't guarantee it will help. It helps more the nasal congestion that the babies get rather than the skin of the baby. Of course, uh, air conditioning adjustments can be done which uh, prevent excessive dry skin. So you may uh, try to avoid keeping the temperature too cold. Definitely cold will cause dryness. You can keep a reasonable temperature which is comfortable for you and for the baby and avoids dryness. Uh, keeping it too warm doesn't help either. I mean sweatiness, uh, you may get something called intertrigo in the folds of the skin if the baby sweats a lot. So intertrigo is a fungal infection uh, which can happen redness under the neck, creases or in the nappy area. We didn't uh, discuss nappy rash so maybe as we discuss rashes I will discuss nappy rash. Uh, intertrigo is also common there and intertrigo just means creases related, moisture related damage. Nappy rash happens for both these reasons. One is uh, moisture and the other one is exposure to urine and stools which can be irritant to the skin. The nappy area in the newborn period is quite sensitive. Most babies have a quite a frequent stooling pattern and so uh, if you don't clean it gently enough, if you are using a wipe and you use force, you may be abrading the skin off and so the bacteria from the stool, the chemicals from the urine may irritate the skin and you may breach, breach the skin barrier so that may lead to infections. The skin of the mother has uh, fungus as a normal uh, common soil sometimes or if the breast has a rash the baby may ingest the fungus and candida uh, which is a fungus can cause uh, candidal dermatitis which is a type of uh, nappy rash which doesn't respond to your nappy cream alone. Uh, nappy cream is basically a barrier cream and uh, usually the composition contains some percentage of zinc oxide and some soothing agents may be there. The vitamin barrier cream from Ustala is a good product. Many parents may be familiar with pseudo cream and other companies have uh, good nappy rash creams as well. So uh, which product you choose depends on what texture you like, whether it suits your baby skin, how well it's wiped off and so on. So some individual preference will come in there. But we recommend preventive use of nappy cream uh, when the baby has a frequent stooling pattern. So if the baby passes stool once a day, probably you don't need to prevent uh, if you are changing the nappy at a regular time frame. However, if there is a delay, uh, the urine may also irritate the skin if it doesn't stay in the nappy well enough. So if your nappy is over full, you may have irritant dermatitis in the nappy area. Uh, as I said, if it's too hot, intertrigo may add on, fungal infection may add on. So if the rash is not simple redness, it may not improve with the nappy cream, you may need to consult your doctor. Uh, regarding the nappy creams, I mean you have to use a good coating if there is redness. If you are using preventive, uh, thin coating may be enough. Also cover the creases. In a boy, cover the scrotal skin as well because it's very sensitive. Whether you need to use wipes or water, washing is probably less abrasive because when you wipe you are using pressure and even if you are using uh, water based wipes some pressure will be there but you do have wipes with moisturizing effect and you may consider using them when you go outdoors i mean you don't have an option but to use wipes when you're at home you can prefer to wash and uh, use the barrier cream once a baby gets older they are not that prone for uh, 
nappy rash however if they have constipation you may get fissures and uh, perianal tags which may happen so you have to encourage good fluid intake you have to give fiber rich food which uh, prevents constipation so uh, nappy rash if the infection is there we use antifungal creams like canistin sometimes you have a combination of uh, antifungal with antibacterial and steroid so one commonly used cream is pandem but i would caution the families not to use pandem on their own because the steroid in pandem cream or a similar uh, cream is uh, quite strong and i've seen babies where pandem has been used as an happy cream which is absolutely wrong and remember that if you use a potent steroid on the skin repeatedly the steroid may enter the system and steroids have a significant impact on even in your immune response so please be careful not to self medicate where uh, steroids and other components are there so i mentioned this question there is a question on diaper rash as a preventive measure or only when there is a rash so you do recommend using it as a preventive in the first two months because most of the babies have a frequent stooling pattern at that time they may pass stool with every feed uh, a small uh, gas release may cause uh, some stool to leak as well and uh, so since it's almost always in contact better to put the nappy rash as a preventive but once a child gets older you don't need to use it as a preventive if the stool pattern is once a day or so if the rash happens you have to treat it early it's similar to the treatment of eczema as i mentioned if the inflammation is more then uh, it gets more difficult to treat so treat it early just intensifying it and remember that the nappy area also needs moisturizing so don't forget moisturizing uh, what is a good moisturizer in summer when it which is not greasy so most babies who have a reasonably normal skin a good baby lotion is enough the mustela baby lotion is fine as well the hydra baby one uh, the stilatopia or the cream like preparations are more needed when you have a tendency to eczema so usually your physician would recommend that or if you have dry skin yourself and if you used it and you want to use it on the more dry areas of your baby you can use it i mean even some newborn babies who are little post mature have very dry skin and the feet and the, you may have cracks any crack in the skin is not a good thing for babies because infection may get into it so you have to uh, make sure you are moisturizing early on even while in the hospital this may happen and the doctor may advise you to use moisturizer so uh, that's one important point let's see i think i've covered most of the questions that have been asked acne i mean i already covered it baby acne so uh, avoid oil application keep the room well ventilated don't over wrap the baby hello to all the mothers who have specifically said hello to me and thank you for joining this as well i think we have uh, five more minutes uh, in this current uh, i mentioned the oil massage for baby as well i mean which is good so we covered that in the current uh, situation obviously most parents are worried about uh, corona virus and uh, the risk to their own children and f- families obviously the government is issuing a lot of uh, guidance and it's very important to follow that uh, take the precautions and luckily so far we have not had any major issues in children and you might be reading about the multi system inflammatory problem that's happening in some babies uh, that's more medical you don't need to be worried i mean not many babies are having that i mean if at all you have some vague symptoms in your baby and someone is in contact uh, uh, with covid-19 patients then it's important to inform your physician uh, regarding the skin care uh, there is uh, not much to do with covid i mean but uh, i will just uh, see if i didn't cover any particular part i mean we wanted to discuss allergy and eczema maybe we could discuss that in the next 5 minutes so uh, eczema that we see in most of the babies i mean the common picture is not a serious type of eczema it's a mild eczema that happens at 1 uh, month to 3 months of age and then it starts improving on its own so that's a very mild type of eczema uh this eczema is mostly due to dry skin if you don't take care of your baby skin properly if you have air conditioning kept at a very cool temperature and so on it tends to happen woolen clothing is not ideal use cotton clothing as possible because wool tends to irritate the skin uh, 
use the moisturizer regularly on wet skin as we discussed and uh, if you see any red patches any dry areas intensify the moisturizing which means you apply it more often uh, petroleum jelly is a good moisturizing that can be applied at night uh, during the daytime uh, mustela lotion or something similar can be used but each time you have to put water on the skin and once you uh, apply the moisturizer you leave it on for some time i mean don't rub it off and uh, if you see the redness increasing you can seek advice from your doctor if you have already consulted before and you have preparations which you have been advised on how to use like whenever i can see a patient i tell them the plan as what to do the next time if it happens so they don't need to consult or come to the hospital unnecessarily they can also email the doctor to examine and sometimes attaching a picture can be helpful so we guide the treatment but ultimately it's a parents understanding that helps and uh, as i said don't overuse steroids steroids improve it quickly but they are not for routine treatment use this as steroid which is the right strength for that area of the skin and for the age of the baby uh, nappy rash creams which have strong steroids be very cautious i mean you can always split the products you can use an antifungal separately antibacterial separately or a mild steroid antibacterial combination like we used in H can be used to reduce inflammation so be careful with what you use and don't uh, don't over treat your baby yourself uh, so uh, we have three more minutes uh, regarding the allergy and eczema there is not uh, a large number of patients who are at risk from allergy and eczema together i mean obviously having eczema predisposes you to sensitization because the skin barrier is damaged so if you have a broken skin barrier allergens can enter the skin if you have a tendency to atopy which is where you react so asthma hay fever uh, these are conditions which are due to your ability to produce more uh, ige antibodies or more eosinophils in your system so you react with production of uh, allergy producing chemicals so asthma is an example of such a condition and eczema usually precedes these conditions it's called the allergic march whether it is related to atopy or because of the eczema the skin barrier is weak and the allergens can enter the skin so it could be a, a factor or both factors playing a role together uh, if you have a definite family history of eczema if you have a definite history of allergy you may identify certain substances to avoid there are some weak evidence to show that partially hydrolyzed uh, formulas may reduce the risk of eczema in the baby but it's not a strong evidence and uh, breastfeeding is obviously the best to prevent allergy as far as we can do that as well mother's diet is not linked to this most of the time if there is a particular allergy like cow's milk intolerance or egg allergy you may get a rash and um, the baby may react but it will be on a regular pattern so usually gut symptoms are more frequent vomiting reflux uh, blood in the stools uh, failure to thrive or poor weight gain these are more common presentations of food allergy so uh, Uh, you don't need to worry too much about allergy if your child has mild eczema and there is no family history of uh, allergy as well i think uh, we are approaching they said there will be 40 minutes time and we are approaching the end of the session so uh, thank you all for joining and uh, i enjoyed being with you i think this will be available online for some time and uh, i think uh, instagram tv will have it on i mean you can forward it to your friends and uh, some of my regular patients are there as well and if you want to ask any questions on email uh, you are welcome to ask uh, i would request anjali to post my email in your uh, group uh, so you will have access to that as well good luck and stay safe thank you